uh, Thibaut Collard will talk to us. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, let me know if the screen isn't big enough in the back, and I'll turn on the resolution. Um, so today, I'm, I'm coming to you from, from Finland. I'm one of the members of the um, Wagtail core team. And I've been working on this new editor for Wagtail called Drafttail, uh, kind of an easy play on word, which is built on this framework called Draft.js. So it's a framework to build rich text editors. Um, initially, I had prepared this talk as a big lecture on the history of the project and how we used it and anything and everything. And it was going to take three hours. So I scratched it all. And this is just going to be demos about what Draft.js can do uh, in and outside of Wagtail and what you can do with it, basically, and um, cool things you can build with Draft.js. Um, and yeah, if you want to learn more about why we did this, why we picked Draft.js, and so on, um, I've been writing blog posts about this, so you can find them on the Wagtail website, and I'll link them in my talk. Um, so first of all, um, demos. This, this is um, the Draft.js editor, as you can see on the screen on the, on the left-hand side. Don't worry too much about the right-hand side. This is just a preview, so you can see the HTML it generates, but everything is going to happen on the left here. Um, so this is pretty much the same interface um, as in Wagtail with the toolbar, um, except the controls are a bit different because I configured it differently. But otherwise, this is what you get in Wagtail so far. Um, and the point of this, this demo site, which I call um, Drafttail Playground, um, is to show both from, a, from an end-user's perspective what the editor does and how it works, and also from a developer's perspective, what's happening behind the scenes. So um, again, left-hand side is uh, the user-facing widget, which is Drafttail, and right-hand side is what you would get on the live page in Wagtail once you've published it, so the final HTML. Um, and um, talking about behind the scenes, so I can show you very quickly how, how Draft.js works. So um, you type something into the page. Hey. On them. And um, it displays it instantly in the editor, of course. And then it, it gets stars into um, Draft.js's format, uh, which is this, um, this structure uh, which here so as, as JSON that has um, a list of blocks for basically all of your paragraphs. Each block has the paragraph's text. And then um, if there are some links or some bold, uh, it's storing where to apply those styles. Um, on the text. Uh, but in terms of technical content, I think I'll stop there. Uh, just show very briefly that once you render this into a Wagtail site, of course, it converts it into HTML. So you can see the HTML version here, which is rendered on the right hand side. And just for fun, I also made a markdown conversion. So it's the same principle. We take the blocks, we go through them, and we convert them into however we want to display the content. Um, so that's how it works behind the scenes. Um, back to the demos. <laughs> um, I have basically made, made a big list of links of cool things to do uh, with this and cool things we've done in Wagtail and outside. So I'll start with the in Wagtail part, show you very quickly what we've done. Um, so I'll switch to this demo site, which is um, the Drafttail demo site. Um, so again, pretty much the same toolbar, same controls. Uh, and I just want to show you very quickly some of the features we've built. So one of them that I'm quite proud of is this um, quick shortcuts to make titles, for example, using the syntax of Markdown. So uh, two uh, hashtag signs like that, two pound signs, and then your text. And your text becomes a title. And of course, it works with um, lists as well. And um, block quotes, too. Um, throughout this demo, if you want to look at the keyboard shortcuts that I use, they are on the uh, left-hand side right here. Um, so that's an example of a feature that Draft.js um, makes it easy to implement. And um, I, particular, I particularly like this one because it allows you to keep your hands on the keyboard at all times. And usually those shortcuts are much easier to remember than the ones from, say, Word or Google Docs. Uh, but of course, if you're used to um, normal shortcuts, you can still use the command B and so on to, to turn your formatting. So uh, no biggie. Um, Next feature on my list is something we've spent quite a bit of time on. So um, as most of you probably know, as an end user of the CMS, sometimes you use the editor and you do your formatting and you enter your content directly inside the CMS. But quite often as well, you'll take your content from Word or from an email or just from a web page. And well, when you want to paste it into Wagtail and that can create uh, some issues. So we spent quite a bit of time making sure that the, this space would be handled. 
So here I have a Google Docs that has all sorts of Google Docs formatting, um, heading levels and bold and so on, but also things that are Google Docs specific. And I can just quickly show you if I uh, copy it all and paste it into this draft.js field. Um, it's going to correctly strip the formatting that's not allowed and only keep what is allowed in editor, which is, in that case, it's what uh, is in the toolbar at the top, basically. Um, so yeah, very quick demo, but there was a lot of work to get this going, and I think it's going to fix lots of problems for lots of people. Um, next on my list, so, so far this is pretty much basic reflex I've shown you. I also want to show you that we can uh, build more advanced things with this. So this page on the DraftTail demo site that you can go to has a lot of different plugins, like for example, this uh, text counter plugin that also tells you uh, how, much, how long of a read your content is going to be. Um, this special text style that kind of redacted text. I'm not sure if you'll use it, but it's good to see that you can build it if you want to. Um, things like embeds and also um, code blocks with syntax highlighting. The syntax highlighting is like really toned down here, but uh, I assure you it's there. <laughs> um, and this is a big toolbar. It has all of the default options turned on here. So some of those you'll find useful, like strike through and mark and so on. Uh, some of them are very esoteric. Um, I, I'll, I'll move on towards more interesting things. Um, so, so far it was only things that are available in uh, Wagtail's version of a Draft.js editor. Now we're going to look at other people's Draft.js implementations. So things that uh, I didn't do and no one uh, involved with Wagtail did, just things from the Draft.js community. Um, <clears throat> and the idea behind those things is that they'll either inspire you to use them on your sites or inspire us to put them into Wagtail directly. Uh, one of my favorites is emojis. <laughs> Who doesn't love emojis, to be honest? Um, so. Here, this is a very basic example. Emojis are, are just plain text, so you can, of course, paste them anywhere in, inside a text block or a text area, but you can also build fancy controls like this that uh, give you an emoji picker, and then you can uh, yeah, choose one and insert it wherever the cursor is. So, still fairly basic, but yeah, emojis, come on. <laughs> um, Next up, we have mentions. So another way to facilitate entering content. Uh, for the emojis, we had a picker. For mentions, well, this is the same system as Twitter, for example, where you start with an ad sign and then you get some sort of autocomplete on your content. So here it's autocompleting by a list of people. Um, that might not be very useful in the CMS, but you could also autocomplete by page title or anything and everything, really. Um, this is very low level, then what you do with it is completely up to you. And I'm sure lots of sites won't have any use for it. I'm sure lots of bigger sites might find a use case. Um, another quick example, um, videos and embeds. So we have those in Wagtail already. I just want to show you that we're not limited to the current implementation. So here I um, paste my YouTube video inside of this field, and it automatically shows you the player, which doesn't sound like much compared to what we have in Wagtail at the moment, but I think it's still pretty cool. Uh, by the way, the Sumo tournament is on right now, and it's very good. You should watch it. Um, that's a more advanced um, counter plugin where it counts the characters, the words, the lines, and so on. I think this is pretty cool in particular because it has nothing to do with rich text. It's, uh, 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 you can use this on any type of field, even if it's just plain text, and it's equally as useful. So um, yeah, definitely worth having in Wagtail, in my opinion. Um, stickers. <laughs> I don't use stickers much myself, but um, I'm sure some sites could use some ponies and fairies and unicorns. <laughs> uh, I'll move on to the next one. Um, not sure how many people use uh, mathematical formulas on their sites, but again, that's something you can do very easily with Draft.js, where um, you, you can um, quickly have some widget that pops up over the editor and allows you to edit the formula in a way that uh, is user-friendly and then display it differently in the editor and on the live site as well. So it could, could be useful to lots of us. Um, same goes for LaTeX. I'm not sure again how common LaTeX is inside um, CMSs, but uh, it's the same principle. You have a UI that's displayed in the editor that just shows you the rendered version and then a field to um, customize the content. That looks a bit like stream field as well. And there are reasons that why we would want to use stream field for this over Draft.js, but it's just cool to show that it's possible. Um, 
something much simpler, but I still like quite a lot. Uh, again, coming back to Markdown, so coming back, yay, to Markdown, and um, yeah, just another way to do your formatting without having to touch the toolbar, basically. Um, right now, we only have this in Wagtail for block level things like um, quotes and titles, but there would be nothing preventing us from having it for inline styles as well. Um, sorry, I just look for my notes again. Wow, we're right at the, at the end already. I'm right on time. That's great. <laughs> um, so what next? Um, I, I want to quickly mention a few ways for you to dig deeper into this and also for you to contribute back to this effort because, um, in my opinion, this, this new editor, this is ju just the first version, and the point of this first version was to replace the previous editor, not to really do anything too fancy, but we definitely want to build upon this and get those, those fancy user experiences into our CMS. Um, so first of all, again, the, the best way to learn more about this is to read those blog posts um, that are available on the wacta.io site. And um, in terms of helping out, well, um, something I, I would love to see more people doing is trying out the editor inside and outside of Wagtail and basically stress testing it a bit. Um, so um, a few people have tried it and I have noticed uh, error issues with it quite quickly. So for example, I'll show you a bug. Uh, I shouldn't do that, but I'll still show you anyway. If you select an image and then press some specific combination of keys, the editor just disappears and crashes, um, which is bad. <laughs> I still think it's better than what the previous editor did. The previous editor just looked like everything worked, even though it didn't, and had like some invalid content in it, whereas here at least it's explicit that oh, something bad happened. And if you, do, if you would stress that it, test it like that, or give it to your clients to, to stress test as well, um, they'll arrive on this type of UI that's meant for, oh, there is an error, and from that they can uh, submit a report saying, oh, yes, I tried this and that, and and boom. <laughs> and yeah, um, the more the merrier, basically. Um, another way to help would be to uh, work on the user guide. So this editor is available standalone outside of Wagtail, not just inside of Wagtail. So it also has its standalone user guide, uh, which features uh, some of the most important, uh, important features, like the, the shortcuts, the copy-paste support, and um, has this big table full of keyboard shortcuts. Um, I think this ha there is lots of room for improvement here, especially in terms of the language we use when we talk to um, those end users of the CMS. So if anyone is keen to work on that, um, please let me know and I'll, I'll show you the way. Um, and yeah, just collaborate on new features. So that's what we did uh, during the sprint. We had a few people working on making existing rich text plugins work with this new editor and also making sure that whatever we built next would have the good APIs and, and templates to, to make it work. Um, so yeah, just um, getting involved, basically. Um, thank you for listening. I'm Thibault, and if you want to look at those slides and this demo, it's available at this URL. That's me. Thank you, Thibault, for your talk and for all your work on championing this uh, great improvement My for Project Hill. Um, are there any questions about this? Yes, Rob, someone whose name I know. Great. First of all, thanks uh, Thibault for the major efforts on uh, getting this thing done. Uh, could you please elaborate how you can migrate your existing content from the existing Halo yeah. editor to Drafttail? Yeah, that's something I didn't cover at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there isn't much of a migration. The reason for that <laughs> is that when we decided to bring this into Wagtail, the decision was made that we should uh, still make it swappable between one editor and the other. So behind the scenes, the content is still stored the same way. Um, it might differ a bit in formatting. So for example, Halo had this issue where it would insert BRs everywhere, and the new editor doesn't. So you might not have that in your content. But any content that has been created with Halo is uh, usable with the new editor as well. Custom plugins in Halo. Yeah, so that's uh, that's something that we didn't support yeah. at all. Okay. So if you made a custom plugin, there is a new API that's documented in the docs, and hopefully it supports what you did. If it didn't, uh, if it doesn't, please come to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no yeah. no support. Okay, so no support thing is just install new version. Your content is over with no problems. That's great. Cool. Thanks. 
other questions? Yes, I will just pass it on. Um, could you uh, elaborate on how effective this Ristex editor is for copy paste from Microsoft Word? Yep. And uh, second question is, suppose we do an embed, like a YouTube embed, and we want to customize the HTML, for example, adding a wrapper around it, um, would that be possible, or how would that be possible? Um, so, for the sorry, for the embed, you mean the embed on the live site, not in the editor? Not in the editor, but on the live site. Okay. Um, so, um, support for copy pasting. Um, it's not actually that hard. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm kidding. Um, it depends on how you configure the editor. Basically, since um, Draft.js doesn't use HTML to store its data, it's quite easy for us to go through the Draft.js structure and content and decide, oh, this type shouldn't be allowed, this type should be allowed, and so on. So what this means is that there might be some, some things that Word does that won't be preserved inside Draft, draft tail, um, but there will no, never be the other way around, like some things you paste that are, are um, not allowed but still present in the content. Um, so for example, here I, I have my, I have lots of testing documents for all of the um, Word processors. Here this is a long document with all sorts of Word specific formattings, like, yeah, anything and everything. <laughs> and I'll just show you um, what happens when you paste it. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, let's take a smaller subset. This is a very big document, so I might just be crashing my computer right now. Okay, okay, you won't see what today, you'll just see Google Docs again, and just a smaller subset of it. That, that feels safer. Um, so here, for example, um, the Google Docs HTML already uses an H1 tag, so when Draft.js receives it, it knows it can uh, convert it to its header one format, and that's what it does here. It also receives um, um, a U tag for the underline, and again, since it's available here, um, it puts it to, uh, to use. But for example, for superscript and subscript, which are enabled here as well, it doesn't receive the right tag because that's not how Google Docs implements it in their uh, word processor. So here it fails to preserve it. Um, but the, the issues you'll face with this are always those types of issues, failing to preserve some format, never the other way around, preserving format that's not, shouldn't be there. Um, and so that, that was your first question. For the second one, um, the support for this isn't great at the moment. Uh, the reason behind this is that we, we prioritized improving the editor UX rather than um, customization of how you render this content on the site. So for embeds, I think there is a way. Uh, it's not documented, but there is a way. Um, but that's on the roadmap, basically. We want to have an API to do this for any and all types of content. Um, this is one of the reasons why we developed this editor initially. We wanted to be able to have very advanced and very custom content, uh, much more custom and domain specific than embeds. So there is an API that does this. It's just not into Wagtail just yet. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Kun. Yeah, I, I'd like to contribute to the uh, answer of the question that the Wagtail way of uh, embedding like uh, a video is making a stream field mm. and a paragraph block and then you can choose and so then, then you have the full control. Yeah. Right. Anyone else? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Thibaut.